Hello there. Right, today I'm going to be doing a live programming um, demonstration. Uh, basically, I'm going to be making Pong, but I'm going to be doing it in the um, version 2 AGK. Um, now, I haven't actually used this very much yet. Um, it's still in alpha. This is uh, version alpha 5. I'm also using IDE update 5.1, um, which you have to install separately. It's just a matter of copying the editor folder into the main directory structure, so that's not too much of a problem. Um, anyway, uh, you've got AGK version 2 here. And for those of you who are familiar with version 1, as you can see, it's quite a layout change. Um, for those of you who aren't, here's a look at AGK version 1. As you can see, um, the, I, the interface is... Um, um, so, you know, there is a vast difference um, in terms of layout and things. So what I'm going to do now is just <laughs> program Pong, and I, I laugh um, skeptically because uh, I'm not going to refer to any resource material or anything like that. I'm just going to use the native um, amateurs Hi, I'm sorry. You will notice a few audio dropouts and webcam stutters. Um, I'm not sure why that's happening. It's probably something to do with the virtual machine. Um, but not too much of sound and recording has been lost. So um, please, um, I beg your patience and hopefully it won't appear too often in this video. And commands and things. Um, I really am. I'm constantly referring to help. Going, oh, how do how do I do that one? How do I do this one? I know the basic commands. I just can't remember <laughs> um, um, all the uh, the parameters sometimes. So anyway, um, so I'm just going to call this um, AGK. We're going to go create. And yes, I want to. Do you want to add a new file? Yes, I suppose so. So, okay, so that's all done. So we started off with a virtual resolution. Um, please excuse me playing with my nose every so often. My nose is a bit stuffy today. Um, anyway, uh, so yeah, um, here it is. You've got the basic uh, interface going. So we just, um, right, so that's, oh, that's broadcast. Okay, so I need to run. Um, as you can see, I really haven't used this IDE before, so... Uh, uh, well, that's not true. I've used it once, but I'm trying to remember how things work. Oh, well, F5 seems to do it. That's that's good. <coughs> so, um, yeah. So that that's now working. If you press F5 on the keyboard, that seems to work. There may have been a slowdown, I suppose. Because that, that compile button wasn't highlighting. Now, remember, this is an alpha. Um, so there are going to be problems, there are going to be bugs. So if you hit that issue, just press F5, everything works fine. Which I tend to do anyway, to be honest. So it's not a big um, issue for me. So um, I'm trying to remember now how to start Pong. Uh, might as well keep the, the FPS in there. Um, I'm getting messages on my phone. You'll have this every so often. Apparently I don't look too sleep deprived. I have no idea what she's going on about there. Anyway. Um, is that set? Ah. Set display aspect. And we're just going to go 19.0. Um, Whoops. My typing is going to be terrible today. And 19.0. <laughs> <laughs> it's 16 divided by 9 because I'm a bit of a prat already. It's a Sunday morning, so um, not that's much of an excuse. Uh, anyway, so just, just a, um, aspect ratio. Also, going to set the um, title. So that's going to be AGK V2 Pong. And we're going to go um, 1280 by 720. And save all back to here. And again, I, 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 you'll see me frequently running the program. Yeah, that's that's the aspect ratio I wanted. Um, so I'm I'm sort of designing this running on an Android device. Um, so the first thing I need to do is set up data. I really am doing this off the top of my head now. Um, so data. and type. And now what am I going to need to track for all the sprites? There's going to be three primary sprites. There's going to be the ball and the pads. So I'm going to need um, X as float, 
Y as float, so we've got some nice fine movement on screen. Um, we need to maintain this, we need to record the speed of the object, so that's going to be speed X or SX, and that's going to be float as well, and SY as float. What else do we need? Um, Oh yeah, we need an object ID for the sprites as integer. And as I need new things, I'll just add them as I go along. That should be enough for now. Um, and now I do like the fact that we can do this. We can collapse everything. Yay! That's, I don't think I could do that in AGK version 1. I'm just going to quickly check because I can't remember to be honest. Um, file new empty file and we we'll just copy this code see if it copies while it's um, collapsed as well that'll be interesting yes that copies yeah so because uh, i'll get confused between um dark basic professional and um agk <laughs> so no that that feature wasn't available in the first one so that's an improvement there already the fact that we can reorganize our programs by collapsing things as we need to Oh, excuse me. Um, right, so that's that done. So we can get rid so we can minimize the type now. That's good. I like that. Um, trying to think what else to do now. I want to go through the options a little bit actually. So I wonder. Oh, yes, I can change the font because I'm using a full um, HD resolution recording, so it might be advantageous. And uh, there is no font in that now. Okay, I have select a font as well. Ah. Okay, for some reason it wouldn't let me click on what's we call it on OK there, so I just press escape, that got me out of it. So we'll try that again. This time I'll select a font first. Again, remember this is um I'll try that one, it's a nice big bold one. This is beta software. No, it's not beta, it's still alpha, so it's not even that advanced. <laughs> right, and right, that's good. Now you can see um the code more easily uh, if you're watching full HD and if you're not and it downsizes that should help a lot so that's that's good for tutorial making so now you'll be able to see the code more easily um, right so we've done that now we need to create our sprites don't we actually no I need to globalize things so I need to global ball as and I didn't give the type of name because that's right I always put an underscore for types because um, well, it's a personal habit, uh, but it, it means that if I want to reuse Sprite for an ID anytime, I can just do so. Um, global um, LPAD as Sprite and global RPAD as Sprite. Now, what else will I need to do? I also need something, well, I need score, won't I? So global actually no score should be because it's two players you've got the um, AI and the player side so we're just going to add score here and that will allow us to keep track of it there um, we're going to need um, score text so we're global that Don't actually need to do that as integer, declare it because it's automatically integer because we haven't used any symbolic um, declarations. But um, I always do that anyway because it's just easier to go up the code and, and read basically. Um, um, no, it just hard hard code most of it in there, not going to be too fancy with this now. Um, so if I go um, ball.id equals create sprite. Now I like the fact that it comes up with um, the parameters because that's the one thing I can never remember. What parameter goes to what command? The fact that this appears is um, now I'm just going to assign the image zero because we're going to create a media list sprite. Um, then I'm going to go um, set sprite. Uh, don't want well, no, I do want color actually. 
Um, now again, um, it's giving me all the information there. So all I've got to go is ball dot dot id comma. Now 40 disappears after you type in the first one, um, but it did tell you what it was anyway. If you can't remember that, then you're about as thick as I am. <laughs> okay, so that should do that. Set sprite size. That's the one I was thinking of. And we're going to go. So it's float width and float height. Okay, so ball dot id. And we're working on a percentage basis now. So I'm going to make it. Oh yeah, I need to do the aspect ratio calculation. So that's going to be um, global aspect as float. And then we're going to go. Um, aspect equals um, 16.0 divided by 9.0 and then we're going to go um, 2.0 so it's 2 percent big of the screen and we're going to go 2.0 times aspect oops excuse my bad typing and I'm going to quickly run a broadcast so we have a nice square shaped ball there now I'm just going to make sure that I didn't do anything unnecessary there. So if I get rid of that... Oh, that's the other thing I want to do. I want to get um, a nice easy way of exiting it. So I'm just going to go if um, get the uh, uh, 29 I think it is equals uh, 1 then end. And I'm just going to see if I got that right. So F5 no, I didn't get that right. So I need to look at the scan codes. Or is it 27? Ah, oh, it's 27. Okay, I could remember it. I was only two off. <clears throat> um, so anyway, that, that gives me a quick way of exiting because clicking on the X is a bit slow. Uh, now, I should actually mention that I'm running this on a Mac. Um, so the whole Windows operating system you're seeing here is running on a Mac Mini um, 2012 version. So that's a 2.5 gigahertz um, i5 processor um, using their Intel onboard graphics. Uh, this is uh, the Parallels desktop machine. Um, which is what I'm using to record everything. So if it's a little bit sluggish, that's why. It is running off an SSD, so it's pretty quick actually. And it's got about 10 gig of RAM because I upgraded it myself. Um, but yeah, I mean, if you want to run um, it on a Mac, then basically run it on Parallels desktop. You will still need a, a legal copy of Windows, but it works great, as you can see. Um, so anyway, uh, so I've worked out the aspect. I was just going to remove the aspect here, just see if it changes the shape at, at all. Yeah, see, it's it's more of um, a rectangle shape now. So um, so by uh, by doing that, we basically maintain that lovely um, squeeze shape from uh, from Pong. And then, of course, we've got to set the offset. So set sprite um, offset ball dot id, and that's going to be one point zero. And now I'm going to have to calculate this. That's so going to be 2.0 times. Actually, no, I should just do this. 1.0 times aspect should be the same thing. And save all. Right. So what do I need to do next? That should be it then. The ball should be in the middle of the screen. Um, oh, we need to set some speed of the ball, so we're just going to go ball dot sx, and for now we'll just call it 1.0. It's going to be a bit fast. Um, actually, I'll set that to 0 0.5, and I'm going to set ball dot sy um, to 0 0.25, and that's going to be our speed calculations. And just make sure. Oh, you can bookmark as well. Okay, it's cool. Um, yeah, that's all the fun. So now we're going to go down, and we're going to create the uh, the left paddle first. The left paddle will be the uh, I, I, I <laughs> AI paddle. <laughs> Momentarily losing the functionality of my tongue. Um, 
so... Oh, we need to set a position as well, so ball.x equals 50 and ball.y equals 50.0 Position don't me. Set sprite position and by offset ball.id and we're just going to go ball.x comma ball.y and I should put it then in the middle of our screen. You'll see me oh, compiling a lot. Right, error. End of line, not value field for underscore sprite. So what have I done wrong? Um, which line is it? Is that line 30? Oh, duh. Right. <laughs> So yeah, so we now got the ball nicely in the middle of the screen, I think. Yeah, that looks all right. And that's it then, isn't it? I just need to copy this. Um, save myself a bit of coding. And what I'm going to do now is test out the search and replace functions. So search and replace and in selection. Oops, my bad. Okay, so it's slightly different from what I'm used to. So we'll try that again. Uh, I see I click on the in selection then. So I search for ball and I'll replace it with um, L pad. And ah, that was easy. That saves a lot of typing, doesn't it? Um, now I can also get rid of. No, actually, no. That, that I I don't need the speed. That's what I don't need. I don't need speed. I don't need speed there either. So if I adjust this, the fifty percent is fine there. We're going to set it to a five distance from the edge. And this is going to be the right hand side, so we're going to set that um, to 95. And I'm going to do the same replace function then. So search and replace, and we're just going to go and find and replace in selection. Okay. Do you want to click on the wrong one there? Um, so colour has been set up, had, that looks all fine to me. Now of course we need to adjust the size, so it's going to be 10 and 10. And we'll make the pad slightly thicker than the ball, so I'm going to go 5 and 5. And if we save that, yeah, that's got our pads there. Hmm. Why are they a bit flow lower down than I thought? Um, position by offset, 50. Oh, I haven't set the offset, have I, properly? Of course, I'm an idiot. So I need to change that to 10 as well. And 10, and this should be um, 1.25 and... Uh, 1.25 Oh, have I gone too far up? Of course it needs to be half, doesn't it? Again, this is why I compile frequently is because blindingly obvious things often slip by me so I'm always testing the program to make sure um, <laughs> It's like that, you know, I'm just Completely messing this up. Don't know what I'm doing at this point. <laughs> I probably changed the wrong one. That's a size, isn't it? I changed the wrong size. <laughs> um, so that's going to be five. The offset and the offset. Let's try that, shall we? Or maybe what I should do is uh, just try this first of all. No, that's fine, that's fine. That's what I'm looking for. Okay. Um, 
Yeah, so that's fine then. Uh, do, 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 do. What else can I do then? Right. Well, it's just the main logic code now. So, um, player control. And this is going to be a very straightforward. Um, I'm just pausing while I think. No, actually, I want to make the ball uh, move first, don't I? Ball movement. And this is going to be a case of. Um, yeah, did I set the speed here? Yes, I did. So all I've got to do then is go um, ball ball dot x equals ball dot x add ball dot sx, and then ball dot y equals ball dot y add ball dot sy. Um, set um, sprite by position by offset, and we're going to go ball dot id equals ball dot x ball dot y. Don't know why I said equals there, but I did. Um, and in theory, when I test it, the ball should just move. Okay, that's good. That's what I'm looking for. Um, now we need to do some limits. So we need to go um, if ball dot x is greater than 100.0, then we need to go um, now if it's going to be that's going to be the plus direction then. So it's going to be ball dot x equals ball dot x ball dot x minus ball dot x just to reverse it um, subtract 0 0.05 so we've got a slight increase I'm going to make that 25 so we've got a slight speed increase on the ball um, every time it changes direction and then we go if ball dot x is less than 0, 0.0 then ball dot x equals abs just to convert it um, ball dot x and we're going to add um, 0. 2.5 um, Let me just do the same for Y then And if I'm correct that should give us a nice bouncing ball thing. Nope. <laughs> I was wrong. Okay, what did I do wrong there? I'm an idiot. It's SX, not X. <laughs> A little bit of uh, stupidity there. Okay. And actually that should all then occur after the logic has been carried out. Oh, what have I done wrong? That's better. That's looking more like Pong. Okay, so we've got basic movement on the ball. Next thing is player movement, because that's the next easiest thing to do. So, um, now what I'm going to do here is use tilt sensors on the device itself. So if I put this on an Android device, it'll do that. Um, and arrow keys on the keyboard, and the best way of doing that is with the um, um, get direction y. Um, I'm going to multiply this by two. Um, so what we're actually going to do is go 
Um, it's going to be the right pad, isn't it? So our pad dot id no dot x equals our pad dot x um, add direction dot y and this should be y not x because we're going up and down not left and right um, that should be it actually um, set sprite position by offset um, our pad dot id our pad dot x and our pad dot y and we also need to put a limit there so if um, our pad dot y is greater than 100.0 then our pad dot y equals 100.0 and if our pad dot y is less than 0, 0.0 then our pad dot y equals 0, 0.0 and if I'm right that should be all I need to do oh what have I done I'll put an extra full stop there my bad okay so that works and we got a nice limit going um, next I'm going to do the AI <coughs> and if um, ball dot x dot sx is less than 0, 0 0.0 and bald dot um, x is less than five, uh, 50 point zero, then we can carry out this next block of code and this is basically a way of um, artificially limiting the AI so that it only responds when it's going towards its side of the screen and it's within its half of the field. Um, otherwise, it's going to be constantly tracking the ball, which is just going to look weird. Um, we don't want that. And then we're basically going to go if um, ball dot y is greater than l pad dot y, then l pad dot y equals l pad dot y plus um, 1.0 if all dot is less than l pad dot y then l pad dot y equals l pad dot y minus 1.0 uh, and then we're going to need to set it set sprite position by offset um, l pad dot id and then we're going to go um, l pad dot x l pad dot y and if I'm correct that should mean it now tracks the ball Good. So that's now tracking the ball. It's a little bit jerky because I'm using in, um, in 1.0 increments rather than working out the fine movement. Um, I could work out the fine movement, but I'm not going to bother with this demo. This is just getting the basics working. So we've got you know control. Now we need to do is get collision working. Um, though what I am also going to do is get score working. So um, Now we only want to go on the X and Y, so we're going to move this down and create a logic block. Um, so if it hits the left hand side, um, 
thinking. If it hits the left hand side, that's going to be the L pad. That means the R pad score is add one. Was R pad dot score add one. If and whoops, didn't mean to do that. Uh, then it's the same logic then, isn't it? Oh yeah, I need to do this. Then it's gonna be L pad dot score. Yes, because that's gonna be the right hand side then, isn't it? Um, equals L pad dot score um, add one and if um, just quickly print the score as well. So that's going to be string L pad. Yeah, so left first, so L pad dot score. Uh, divide with a colon. Add string L pad dot score. That's going to be R pad, sorry. R pad it is. And then we save and uh, compile. Good. Good, that's working. And by doing that before I set the. Um, sorry. And by doing that before I set the collision code with the the pads, we get a nice test. Wait. No, that's going the wrong way around, isn't it? No, it's not. No, that is right. That should be reversed. Yes, that's right. So I get myself a little bit confused then. <laughs> <coughs> All right. Um, so next is just uh, impact with the uh, um, the pads, isn't it? Try to decide. So realistically, I need to do it within the ball movement, don't I? So I need to do it before that. So yeah. Um if um ball dot y is within I'm trying to think now. Obviously not my strong suit. So I need to make sure it's within the boundaries of the pad itself. So we need to get the x and we need to get the exposition of the pad, including the offset and size of the pad itself. So that's going to be a ball dot y. Now it was five times aspect, wasn't it? Um, yeah. So if ball dot y is less than um, sorry my brain's not working if ball dot y is less than and ball dot y is greater than then what I need to do is go greater than um, no that's less than then um, now this is going to be the right pad or the left pad, so it's going to be start with left first. So, so L pad dot x no y um, add uh, five point zero times aspect. I think that's right. Um, 
is this then um, L pad dot Y retracted? Is it? I think so. Minus um, 5.0 times aspect. Then we need a logic thing here. I think that's right. Oh, and of course, and um, ball dot x is now this is going to be the left hand side. It's less than because uh, it's two point five, so that's going to be five in. So that's going to be five point zero plus because um, uh, it's positioned at the centre. That's going to be five point zero plus six point two five, I believe. Um, so what we're basically saying here now is if it's um, less than the top of the pad and it's... No, if it's greater than the top of the pad, is that right? May have got that the wrong way round. Let's try reversing those because I have a horrible suspicion that's the wrong way round. Now, if it's hitting the left pad, yeah, if it's hitting the left pad on that side, then it's going to be going in a negative direction. So what we need to do then is go ball dot um, sx equals ball dot sx um, um, times. Why do I need a times? Oh, I need to abs it. You must forgetting something. Uh, and we just do that. So I don't want to add a speed increase, do I? Actually, I suppose I should. Um, 0 0.25. And we'll test that one first, because I'm not entirely sure if I've got the, um, um, the greater than or less than symbol. Okay, no, that seems good. That did what I wanted it to do. Okay, that's good. That is very good. Yay, first time. <laughs> right. Um, so I'll just duplicate this then for um, our pad. So search, um, replace, and we're going to go L pad with our pad. And this is then going to be greater than, and that's going to be uh, 95 um, for 3.75, I think. Uh, actually, I'm going to check that one. So it's going to be um, 95, take away 1.25. Okay, I did get that right. And save all. Oh, no, that didn't work. Ooh. That's that's bad. Oh, <laughs> that's why. <laughs> I'm increasing it. Right. Um, so ball.sx minus ball.sx. Take away ball.sx. Take away 0 0.25. Save all and broadcast. Whoops, there we go. That's looking much more like Pong, isn't it? Yay! Whoops, haha! <laughs> right, you don't do that, do you? Oops. Bit of a bug there. Oh, got one. Yay. Whoop. It's funny. If he goes behind, it doesn't seem to score. It's like it's reversing all the time. There's probably something wrong with my logic at some point. I'll work that out later. 
Um, 